Hi gang, I'm Lisa McClendon and we're going to start off Journalism 419 by talking just a little about, about what editing is and why we need editors. Um, obviously, you need to take editing because we think it's important, um, but you may not exactly understand everything that editing entails. So this is going to be a really brief overview of the things that go into editing and why even if you don't think you're going to be an editor, you're going to need some of these skills. So I've got a few examples to show you. Um, I will share my screen here so you can see it. So let's pop that up right here. Um, there we go. And let's go to the whole slide. Okay, great. Um, first off, what is editing? Um, you may have the idea that editing is basically just, you know, going through looking for typos, um, you know, trying to fix misspellings and maybe a comma or two here and there. Um, there's way more to it than that. Um, fixing typos and commas is part of editing, but it's like a little bitty part, okay? Um, that is not the be all end all of editing. It's an important part of editing, um, especially that, that picky cleanup that really makes your writing look professional. Um, and you always want, if you're doing this for a living, you wanna look like you know what you're doing. Um, and so the picky cleanup is really important. It's a, an important part of this. Um, and that's what we call micro editing. Um, the things that go into micro editing, uh, mechanics, that means spelling, grammar, punctuation, usage, usage means like affect or effect, imply versus infer, how the proper spelling of to or peak or something like that. Okay, that's usage. Um, AP style, all right, you should have an AP style book from Journalism 304 um, and understand a little bit about style from there. We're going to really kind of hit that hard in this class because you really need to understand um, you know, the basic things of AP style so that you don't even have to bother looking them up. Um, you definitely need to know the things you have to look up, even if you need to look them up every time, that's okay. You don't have to memorize the whole big fat AP style book, that's fine. But you need to know what's in there and where to find it in the style book. Um, most news and public relations companies use AP style because it's a style that's made for mass communication. You may have used MLA style or APA style for your uh, English papers, and that's okay. Research papers, scholarly writing is different, and you, there are different things that you need to worry about that you don't need to necessarily worry about in journalism and professional writing for a mass audience. Um, so that's why we use AP. It doesn't mean that AP is better. <laughs> it just means that that's what we use for the purpose of writing that we're doing. Um, lots of... Uh, Publishing houses use the Chicago Manual of Style, so like book publishers, some magazines will use that. It doesn't really matter which style your publication is using. If you're editing for that publication, you need to follow that style, okay? And they're gonna differ on some things and that's okay. Again, like I said, it doesn't mean one of them is right or one of them is wrong. It just means they're different and you need to follow the one that you're working with. Um, Another skill in micro editing is untangling convoluted prose. And what this means is it has somebody like really backed into a sentence, has somebody piled up a bunch of clauses and it's really hard to follow the sentence. A good editor will sort of tease that out, maybe break a sentence up into two sentences or sometimes even three just to make it clearer for the reader. Um, or they may streamline the writing to get rid of excess words. Um, this is one where you're not paid by the word, all right? The whole idea of journalism and professional writing is delivering information to an audience that wants it, okay? And so you want as few things to stand in the way of the audience getting that information as possible, okay? And so an editor is going to be the one who's going to go through and sort of clean up extra words that are sitting there just taking up space that you don't need, um, you know, a sentence that doesn't, that's so complicated that it's really hard to follow. You don't want that, okay? Um, think of those like sort of speed bumps on a road that keep you from getting where you're going as quickly and smoothly as you can, okay? Um, and a good editor will get rid of cliches too. Um, the reason cliches are cliches is because they have been used to death. <laughs> They've been really overused. Um, and so that's probably, um, it's, probably nothing you really need in, in professional writing. Um, this isn't creative writing, okay? If you're, you wanna use a cliche in creative writing, that's fine, all right? And, and every once in a while it might be all right, but lots of times writers really overuse them. Um, and 
sometimes they're just off-putting to an audience and sometimes they can really kind of confuse people like, wait, what? Does he mean it's really like this or what? Um, so you want to be kind of careful about that. Um, but the micro skills, really, this is only one part of editing, all right? You need to be able to get this right so that writing looks professional. But there's other things too that an editor needs to look at. Um, particularly in you know news and professional writing, you need to look at structure and flow. And structure basically means, have we put the most important stuff first, okay? Flow means, does each idea flow smoothly from the next? Are they using transitions? Um, are there, you know, are quotes that are used set up? Um, things like that. Does it make a logical progression from the most important thing through the information that you've got so it feels like a coherent whole? Um, finding and filling holes is another one. Is there a big question that the story doesn't answer? Is there something that people would be like, hmm, I wonder, um, that the story never gets to. Um, and so part of it being a good editor is anticipating questions that readers might have. And sometimes this is as simple, I mean, you probably did this in a news release in 304. Sometimes this is as simple as, okay, when is this event happening? What day, what time, where is it? Um, does it cost anything to get in? Those kind of really basic things and you'd think that would go without saying, but you'd be amazed at how many professionals like forget a crucial piece of information in something. So this, this is important. Um, fact checking. And this is anything from names and locations. You know, that's check every single name every single time. Check the locations, check the spelling of towns and streets and make sure that, you know, buildings or places are where the story says they are. But sometimes it's a little deeper than that. It's Checking numbers, um, making sure the math adds up, uh, making sure that something really makes sense, making sure that a claim someone has made is actually true. Um, there's a lot of fact checking now that's developed in the past few years, which is good because there's a lot of information out there that's not true, that's floating around and good journalists will fact check things before they get published so that we're not repeating something that's wrong. Um, taste and sensitivity, again, you're thinking about your audience. Um, are you giving too much gory detail in a crime story? Um, is something uh, said that is maybe poorly worded and people could, some people could perceive it as offensive? All right, you want to be careful about that. And an editor's going to have a pretty keen eye to look for things like that. Um, you know, sometimes the things are not intentional even, but somebody's written something and you're like, whoa, this is not how we want to say that. Okay, and the editor is that voice going, whoa, do we want to say this? Okay, you're the one who stops and thinks and asks, do we want to do this? Um, and that, you know, in a more, in a larger sense are ethical and legal issues. Legal are things that could get you sued, right? Like libel, invasion of privacy, um, defamation, all right? That can get you a lawsuit, which you don't want to do. You don't want to deal with that. That is not something that is, um, anything anybody wants to have to have to deal with. So editors are important because they're looking for things like that. Whoa, did you identify somebody who really shouldn't have been identified? Um, have you given too much personal information about somebody? Have you made it seem like somebody is guilty of a crime before they've been convicted of a crime? Those kinds of things. Um, and the ethical things are not necessarily things that you're going to get sued over, but they're things that you could lose a lot of credibility over. Um, and so that, that's sort of where taste and sensitivity kind of blends in before you get to the actual legal stuff with the lawsuit. Yeah, you could publish it legally, but should you? That's the ethical part. Um, and we'll touch a little bit on that. And, and if you haven't already taken the ethics class, you'll, you'll get a lot about that. <laughs> ethics and law. You'll get, get a whole semester on ethics and a whole semester on legal issues, not just libel, but lots of other things. Um, but editors really need to be looking for stuff like that because sort of in the heat of reporting and writing, people don't always think about, you know, they don't think how it looks. They think about their, what they're trying to get down on paper. Okay, there's things that editors need to do beyond copy. Um, once you've edited a story, you're not finished, all right? There's display type and display type is really important. I mean, it's not just the headlines on a newspaper 
Um, lot, most people don't do that anymore. It's going to be the headline on your website. It's going to be subheads. It's going to be summaries. It's going to be tweets. It's going to be titles and supers on your TV broadcast, captions on the photos, um, news alerts that come to your phone, all those kinds of things. Somebody's got to write those. And usually it's the editors that write those, not the reporters. Usually the reporters write the story, turn it in, the editors edit it, and then package it with all the display type that it's gonna go with. Um, editors often are responsible for presentation too. And what that means is, sometimes it means like literally newspaper page design, but not that much anymore. But web design, app design, navigability, is it easy for people to find the information that they're looking for? All right, you don't wanna make people dig for information or confuse them with your layout or anything like that. So that's where editors come in too. Um, often editors need to exercise their news judgment. Um, what is newsworthy? What's gonna lead the six o'clock news? What's gonna um, be the big story on our homepage? What is worth sending out a notification about? All right, those kinds of things, that's news judgment, and usually it's editors making those decisions too. Um, graphics, maybe you're not making the graphics, but you sure need to check them and make sure they're right. But you also may want to suggest one. If you're reading and editing a story that's very number heavy, that has a lot of statistics or figures in it, um, and you think, gosh, this would be so much easier to process if this were a graphic. Okay, maybe it's ordering up a graphic that's gonna work with those numbers. Maybe saying, hey, could we get a map with this story to show people where all these you know, criminal incidents have happened or where these traffic accidents happen or something like that to show people? Because people really respond well to visuals, right? People like pictures, people like graphics. Um, and if you can express something more clearly, some information more clearly to your audience through a graphic, that's a good thing. We want to do that. And so if an editor can suggest that, yay, but then an editor also needs to check it and make sure that, you know, it's the right format of graphic, that the numbers are correct and all that kind of stuff. Um, editors also have to meet deadlines, all right? Usually editors' deadlines are not flexible, all right? Um, reporters may be like, yeah, I get this in around four, and if they turn it in at 530, well, okay, no big deal, all right? But the editor is the one really directing traffic. And you know, if you need something um, you know, ready for your afternoon headline email newsletter to go out, that's got to be up by then. Okay? And you've got to be directing that traffic to make sure that that story is on your website in time for that headline to lead your afternoon headline roundup newsletter. If you decide something's going to be on the 6 o'clock news, you've got to make sure that's ready to go by the time the 6 o'clock news airs. Okay, so you're kind of managing multiple deadlines and making sure people are meeting those deadlines. And because you're writing, working with writers, you have to have a, a sense of tact and a sense of diplomacy. And what I mean by tact and diplomacy is, you know, you've written, you know how when somebody criticizes your writing, it kind of hurts. It kind of hurts, right? Um, even though it's just information that you've gathered, um, you know, you, People don't like taking criticism. Good writers know they need it. Good writers know they need feedback and know that whatever is going out there with their name on it needs to be as good as it can be. And that will get there with the help of a good editor. Um, but that doesn't mean that you're like, nah, 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 this is wrong. Um, you can think that, but do not say that, okay? You need to be a little bit more diplomatic about that. And sometimes what that means is um, you know, saying, okay, I really like what you're doing here. I like this story. This is really interesting. However, don't you think this quote would be better if we moved it up? Or, you know, the, the things that you put in your lead don't seem to be the most important thing. What if we move this information first? So you're working with a writer to improve the story for the audience. Um, and that's kind of the interesting position that editors are in. You have to work with the writers, but you're always thinking of the audience. Um, so you're kind of the first reader on a story rather than an editor. You're like reading it like a reader um, and me making sure that it makes sense and making sure that it's correct and clear and coherent um, because we want it to be that way for our audience. All right, um, why we need editors. Now, some of these are kind of funny, and I use these examples basically to show you 
why this is important and they're, I know they're kind of funny, but you'll remember them, right? Hopefully humor makes people remember things. Um, anyway, all of these are real. Um, these are things that I have had people send me or that I have found, um, you know, in professional publications over the years. So um, this one, uh, a guy that I work with in Texas, when I worked in Texas, uh, now lives in San Antonio and sent me the screenshot of his TV. Um, so for all of you thinking that, um, oh wait, you know, I'm going to TV, why do I need to know editing? This is why you need to know editing, okay? Um, because you don't want to put swear words <laughs> on the six o'clock or the noon news. <coughs> Excuse me, allergies, not COVID. This is one from the Topeka newspaper, and this is a simple affect effect mistake. Okay, but it's in like 70 point type and this is really not what you want to do. And some of these are micro things, but it's the micro things that people notice immediately. And it's the micro things that people notice immediately that really have a hit on your credibility. So you want to be careful um, not to not to make those kind of mistakes. Um, this is one we're locating Hong Kong in Brazil. Um, not sure who made that map but you're in, you know, completely the wrong hemisphere, the wrong continent. Yeah, um, not sure what they were going for on that one, but obviously, I mean, and it takes you like two seconds to look this up on Google, really. It's not hard to fact check this. Not hard at all, but somebody didn't, and there it is. Um, this was one, a tweet from Bon Appetit magazine. Um, if you notice that they're <laughs> talking about millennials spending on food, I'm glad that the average millennial has $96 billion to spend on food. Um, yeah, obviously that's a mistake. Um, I'm not even sure what they were going for, like $96 a week or millenn the millennials spend, the whole cohort spends $96 million a year on food. Who knows what they were going for? But this is a good example of, okay, we are human. We screw up. Okay, and, and you do, that's okay. I mean, you know, it's, you're gonna screw up. We've all screwed up. We've made mistakes or let mistakes through or just done like, you know, what was I thinking kinds of things, all right? One of the best pieces of advice I got from my first editor was, you're gonna screw up. What you do is you admit it, you fix it, you learn from it and you move on. Okay, so don't dwell on it, don't let it eat at you. And fix it may mean like fixing it on your website, which you can do, or in the case of a tweet, which you can't really take back, you can fix the process, which led to the mistake. You learn something from it and you move on. Now, this is what Bon Appetit did. Okay, uh, <laughs> so they admitted, <coughs> excuse me, they admitted that they screwed up. Okay, coffee, this is why you don't tweet at 1 a.m. Okay, they address it with humor. They're like, hey, yeah, we know we screwed up, you know, oops. Um, you know, they didn't delete the tweet, sweep it under the rug. Now there are some tweets you're gonna wanna delete, but this is not gonna be one of them. Um, and so, you know, great, we can all have a laugh at it. All right, we've fixed it. We're gonna now move on and, and actually we'll share the real story with you. Um, this one, there's no typos here. Prince Harry accused of breaking military rules by wearing a beard. Okay, no problem with that headline. Um, only problem here is the picture is Prince William. Um, Prince Harry is in this picture. Sort of half of his face is on the very right side here. But the picture obviously is William. Okay, so we need to, as an editor, you know, figure out, wait a minute, let's get a better picture of Prince Harry in his uniform with his beard where his brother is not in this picture, okay? So sometimes it's just making sure that the picture that you have, the art that you have, matches the story and matches the headline because if people see this on your website, they're gonna be like, duh, that's William. Um, and again, that's gonna dang your credibility and that's not something that you want. You don't want ever, you don't want people to think you don't know what you're doing, okay? You want to make wherever you're working, look as professional as possible. And sometimes it's the little things that really add up because people notice those. And they notice them first. And so they may not even read the whole story because they're too busy either laughing at the headline or going ah, at the headline, neither of which you want. 